Okay, so welcome to today's video. And we're talking about breaking 100. Now, I coach a lot of golfers that have that aspiration to try and break 100. So we talk about many different ways in which we can encourage that. Now, it's not necessarily about shooting 99. I often say it's that almost about trying to shoot 89 to 90 because you know that on most golf courses that it's par 72. If you aim for bogey golf, you'll make 90. And if you are at a level where you're shooting 103 to 105, then you are likely to throw in a couple of horror shots in there, like a, a double or a triple or a quadruple bogey. But if you're still aiming to shoot 90, with that allowed, you are now looking at 95 to 99. So the option is, the, the idea is to not try and break 100 is to try and shoot 90. Now, one of the things that I see a lot as well is the tee selection. In many golf courses, you have options. You have three or four different tee options. You've got to play to the tees that you can hit the golf ball in, in terms of distance. Now, I often use the analogy of you never see a tour pro playing a full tournament round of golf hitting hybrids, four irons, five irons, three woods into greens, into par fours. You never see it. There's the odd crazy hole that's stupidly long and they do hit maybe a four, five or a six iron into the green. But that's a very rare occasion. That's maybe one or two holes out of the full 18. And that's where you've got to base yourself as well because the tour pros are hitting wedgies, nines and eight irons into greens. You've got to pick a tee box where you do the same. And if you're not doing that, you're making golf super difficult. I will guarantee you now, if on a golf on a golf course there are twelve, there are ten par fours. If a tour pro has to hit a hybrid ten out of ten, or nine out of ten times into those par fours, their post round interview they'll be fuming because that golf course is just going to be far too long. It's all relative, distance is relative. So we should play a golf course the way that the pros play it. If they're hitting nine irons and wedges, you need to move up a couple of tee boxes and hit the same, because you don't hit the ball as far as a tour pro. So it's making sure that you're in the right place. Now, that's kind of tip number, all of that is tip number one. Try and shoot 90, play from the correct tees. Tip number two is keep this thing on grass. Now I say that as well because it doesn't have to hit the fairway. It just can't really hit what we see down this golf course, in particular the wasteland and the trees, or we don't want to hit fairway bunkers. We just want to hit the ball in the grass. That sets you up for a second shot that can get near the green, therefore onto the, the, um, the hole on a par four in three shots. So I'm looking at this hole, I'm looking at the setup. The wind's kind of into and off the right hand side. Down the right has just got no there's no future down there. I mean, down the left, to be fair, if I go too far left, there's not much future there either. It's quite a tight hole, this. But I'm gonna be trying to play across the fairway. Now, this tee box is a little bit to the right, so I'm gonna play left across the tee box, okay? So there's a palm tree, I can see, down the side there, down that left side. I'm gonna aim down the left side of the fairway, and I'm just gonna try and keep it in there. Now, one of the things as well is when golfers get stiff, you get nervous you tend to stiffen up. You tend to try not to move too much because you know that a setup position is good. If the setup position is good, I should say, you don't want to ruin that during your swing, but you've still got to have that freedom to rotate. You've got to be able to turn your body, turn your hands. Everything's got to be working together through the shot. So number one on this hole, or number two, I should say, keep the golf ball on the grass. Driver position, ball's inside my heel. Make sure I get plenty of rotation. Hit it really well. Wind just took it a little bit and I'm in down in that left rough, <laughs> just on grass by the way, but it's on grass. That's all we want for this first shot. All right, so as you can see, I really wasn't joking about just about keeping it on grass. Quite a tight shot, this. So I can't really see where the green is, but I've got my buggy. It's telling me I'm 175 yards away, and that's massively important as well. All I've got there is 175 yards to the middle of the green. You hit the golf ball in the middle of the green, you're not going to struggle. Wow, flags over on the right hand side, a little bit further back than centre, but I'll take centre of the green every single time I play golf. I can hit centre of the greens then you work your putts from there. Now, 
you're under a lot less pressure now you've got sometimes rough's all right you get a nice little fluffy lie like i've got there i've got 175 yards in so i've got a seven iron so i've played off a tee that is suitable to my length of swing if a golfer trying to hit below 100 played off the tees that i played off maybe would have hit the ball less distance would have had 220 yards into the green that's a three wood almost it's like it's, it's, you don't necessarily need to play and also as well i was just thinking in the buggy then don't be worried that if you're playing off a forward tee and then you break 100 that's not golf completed use that tee try and break 90 when you break 90 off that tee then move back a tee box and try and break 100 again from the next tee this golf game will throw up constant challenges so we're never we're never going to complete it ever so don't be afraid to take a couple of months from a forward tee to break that score that you want to break, then move back to the other tee box and do it again. Because also psychologically, when you've broken it, trust me, it makes a massive deal. I used to have a real problem when I was off like two or three handicap, I could never shoot under par. My mates would always shoot under par. My golf game would be the best when the conditions were horrendous and I would get it round in one or two over and I would win an event. But when you get a flat calm, well, relatively calm day like today and guys are shooting six under, I was defeated already because I knew I couldn't do it. So I, you have to fight. Once I, op once I broke that duck though, I was able to shoot under par. And this is the exact same scenario for every other golfer. Once you break the duct, you are in a different psychological headspace that you can do it. So bring your tee box forward, do it from there, then work back. Right, anyway, I've got 170 to the flat, to the middle of the green, which is a seven iron. So it's, a, it's an acceptable second shot length. Strike looked good. And it's heading towards where I want to talk next. I didn't, didn't do that on purpose with I was going to kick it in there anyway, but it's in the green side bunker on the right hand side because golfers that want to break 100 have to be able to get out of green side bunkers in one shot. It's very, very easy to really struggle from that type of lie and end up hitting two or three out of the bunker and then the score has just exploded in our faces and we don't like that. So, bunker shot coming next. Right, okay, so we are in the bunker. So uh, we can't be too disheartened with the shot we just hit because from 170 yards away, we picked the club, executed it in terms of distance control, just missed it slightly to the right hand side. So again, we've got to take the positives. It was a good shot, it was a good strike. It hit the distance I wanted to hit, didn't quite get it online. Now we're faced with the next challenge of the hole is this bunker shot. This is quite tricky. It's around about, oh, it's about eight foot high, that lip. As I land on the green, it's gonna kind of run away from me, but it's not crazy. So again, I don't want to overcomplicate. So I always wanna try and find the easiest way out of this shot. The easiest way out of the shot is just to play a normal conventional bunker shot, which would look something like this. Ball position slightly forward. Do not adjust the loft of the club face. Just keep it perfectly neutral. Flare the left foot out exaggerate the posture sit more into your into your hips a little bit more into your knees get a, little, a lower center of gravity and just get the swing working longer but more free flowing so you don't have that panicking change of pace on the downswing where you either decelerate or accelerate we only want a tiny bit of sand and with a decent connection the ball's going to pop up naturally anyway it's going to go up high enough to clear eight feet anyway it's not this is not like we're in the road, road hole bunker at st andrews where it's 15 foot and really enclosed and we've got nowhere to go this is not that difficult it looks harder than it actually is because remember we want to get it out and we want to get this inside of two put range okay so perfect in terms of distance control obviously i want to only just want to clear the lip but i also don't want to get too cute so i'm going to dig my feet in posture and get my backside out a little bit get a nice long free-flowing golf swing keep 58 degrees aloft on the face without adding to it can maintain momentum through the sand i've got my right knee just kind of pushed in here because i don't want to start to put the weight back into my outside of my right foot so what i do is i let my right knee just sit inside of my right foot so it stays stabilizes me as i rotate 
lovely height, carried it too far, but in terms of the mechanics of the shot, I played it really well, to be honest, and see how high it went. I didn't open the face, I didn't do anything spectacular in terms of setup that I wouldn't have done for any other shot. I just made good connection. Now, with that type of shot, even if that leads to a three put, you can walk off this hole, having hit the grass, hit the distance you wanted to hit, hit a really good bunker shot. They are really nice bases. It's a really nice basis to work from and improving your game from there because you know that next time you get into a bunker, maybe don't swing as long and just keep the same rhythm and the ball will go a shorter distance. So let's go and tackle that putt. But before we do that, there's one more shot I want to introduce us to and it's that 30 yard pitch shot. It's where we, we often find ourselves. All right, so the 30 yard shot is vital. If there are par fours that you can't reach into or you don't quite make connection or whatever it's gonna be, you are generally gonna be in this sort of scenario where you're hopefully got a clear onto the green or there might be a bunker in the way or you might be coming from the rough, but it, the same applies. We have to make good connection. We have to get this ball onto the green. If I catch this with a bit of a duff and it goes to the front edge of the green, based on where this flag is today, I'm very much put myself into three put territory. If I catch it a little bit thin and I thin it over the back of the green, my next shot's gonna be short-sided and very much put myself into a chip and two put territory which is down in four, which is double bogey at best. All right, so got to make sure this shot becomes your friend. Get friendly with your pitching wedge and your nine iron. I've got a 50 degree, because it's the shot I would use for here, but you could go, as you can see, maybe a lot of people watching this now, comment below, what would you use for this shot? I've seen everything from six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to lob wedge being used. Certainly wouldn't use a lob wedge though. So what we're gonna do with this particular shot, I'm gonna put the ball in line with my trail foot, which is my right foot. I'm gonna put it in line with my big toe of my right foot, okay? I'm gonna get my hands on the inside of my lead thigh, which is my left thigh. And now I'm just gonna use my putting stroke to glide the club across the ground. Now, the reason I have the ball back in my stance is so I can get the slightly lower trajectory so it has that little bit of roll. Also, what it's doing is allowing me to just brush into the ground rather than dig as well. So, ball position back, hands forward, no wrist, just use your shoulders and your hips. Stab it into the ground, let it really, oh my God. I'll take that all day long. <laughs> Right, as, so as mentioned, I've gone a bit too far than what, what I would actually really like, to be honest. There's also in golf courses, there's different sands to take into consideration. That's quite a soft sand, that's why I did a longer, a longer, smoother swing. You'll find that some courses have that kind of thicker clay style of sand, where if you swing it long, it's very easy for the club to bounce and then it will obviously thin too far. So try to get on a practice area of a golf course or your own local golf course and familiarize yourself with the sand because it will make a difference on the type of swing that you do when you get that when you get that clay styled sand you want to hit the ball with a shorter swing and not as much sand behind the ball because it's thicker anyway so that means it will travel further so you've got to get to grips using the same technique just got to get to grips with how hard you hit a shot right here now we've got three six 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, 33, 36, 39, 42, 45, 48 feet, <laughs> approximately. That's a long way, okay? That is a long way, but you know what? It was a tough bunker shot. All right, so what we need to try and do from this distance is try and figure out how hard to hit it. Pace is always the most important thing. The line's quite obvious. It's definitely gonna be going left to right, because we're going from back to front so this side is definitely higher so i know that i also know that i can see that if i go maybe six foot right it's really going to go down a hill so i don't want to go too much to the right hand side i want to get this inside that kind of bin lid we always talk about of around about four feet if i can drop this down from 40 feet to four feet i think i'll have played a pretty good first putt all right so i all hear you screaming at the tv laptop mobile whatever um, how do we get the right distance that's a that's a great question 
I don't really know. It's a, it's a guess, isn't it? I mean, I don't practice 40 foot uphill left to right putts very often, so I don't know how far to swing. I don't know how hard to hit it. I'm going off an what I call an educated guess. Now, one of the things we can do, we can give ourselves the best possible option. I've, cleaned, I've just cleaned my golf ball, taken any bit of mud off there because that will make a difference to the, the roll of the ball. It could make a difference to a foot or two foot, which when we get down to three or four feet from the hole is massive, absolutely massive. So the first thing I often do is I pick a line. I've gone, I'm saying it's left to right. So I've already picked my side. How much left to right? I'm going to go approximately here. Okay. I, again, I can't determine exactly where it's going to be because also line is very dependent on pace. If I want to hold, if I'm thinking I'm going to hold this, I'm going to be really aggressive with the line. I'm going to hit it super hard. I won't aim as far left. Obviously I won't do that anyway because I'll probably hit it back in the bunker. If I aim, if I try and hit it perfect dead weight, it's generally going to break a little bit more. So from this distance, like I said, we're just trying to get this into a four foot radius. Right, so up the hill, I'm actually using the shadow of the flag is my line. Right at the tip of the shadow of the flag is my line. It's amazing how often that happens as well, actually. It's on the line. I don't think I've hit it ever. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Mm. Right, guys, comment below. What would you give me out of 10? If you're still with me in this video now and you're still watching, what, what were giving me out of 10 for that? I think that's actually not that bad. I had a serious amount of break at the end. One, two, three, four, four and a bit. This is now the business end. So this is the bit where I'm, I'll remark it. I'm gonna to start to get a feel for it. So it's definitely going straight up the hill. I also know that because of the ball going that way quite quickly as it started to lose its speed. So I know that I'm coming back up the hill. Now, I'm not coming straight up the hill. I'm going on a bit of an angle. So this is actually gonna be outside the left and i can determine it's definitely not outside the right okay is it no it's definitely not outside. is it it's definitely not outside the right if anything it's slightly outside the left but to be honest this is very much straight up the hill i probably left this in a in a perfect position i didn't realize i did that but i'll take it and i probably did that because it was decent speed and I chose the right line. So we'll give myself a little bit of credit. Right, come on. This is for that bogey. So we're trying to play bogey golf, remember? Line the writing up straight at the hole. Come on, pace, positive put. Oh no, missed it. And actually, I had this conversation with a tour pro this week, and he said, you had an inkling it was going to be left to right. So it definitely wasn't going to be right to left. So, but you're also quite sure it's going straight up the hill. So don't aim straight at the middle of the hole, because if it does move a little bit left to right, it's going to miss. Aim it on the inside of the hole, but left edge. So if it did, if it did make its move, it was going to fall in at the right side of the hole because you can almost determine as well it was never going to move right to left. I knew for a fact it was never going to move right to left. So what I should have really done is aimed on the left side of centre because if it didn't move, it's no problem, it's gone in. And if it does move, it will fall into that right side of centre. Exactly like that. Yeah, so I started it left edge and it's hit the flag and because it had a tiny bit of break. So I've just learned another, actually, you know what? I've not learned a lesson, I've remembered a lesson. That's one of the things you'll find as well. You're gonna make mistakes, but as long as you can rectify them in your head as to, and rationalize it as to why, then you can always improve your game. So we've made a six, not ideal, difficult par four, tight par four, 400 yards into wind, it was tricky. The bunker shot was probably the wrong miss. If we, if we knew the golf course better, we'd have said that bunker over there was a better miss, get it on the green, but massive green, 40 foot putt. So guys, please do subscribe to the channel if you are new to this channel. 
Comment below. I hope this video has added value to your golf game, give you a, a big insight into how you can improve. If it has, also give me a big smash on that like button as well. You know, that old YouTube algorithm, it loves it. So guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.